Lord is just stirring my heart to study and to teach on this glorious subject of the former and the latter reign of the Spirit. Oh, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for the marvelous opportunity that you've given us, Father, to stand once again and to just proclaim, thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you that you just hide your servant now behind the cross. Father, let them not see me, but, oh, God, let them see you. Father, I pray that the precious Holy Spirit, who is our teacher and who is our guide, will come now and teach us and instruct us and lead us and guide us into the marvelous truths that you want to reveal to our spirit this day. And Father, I thank you that we are eager, we are longing, we are hungry to be used of you and to, to grow in the nurture and the admonition of the word of the Lord. And I thank you you and I praise you that as we hear the word this day that it'll go deep within our hearts and we will produce a harvest in our lives from the word of God not 30 not 60 but oh God give us a hundredfold return of the harvest of the word of God that is being planted in our hearts this day by the glorious Holy Spirit of power and of grace and we just thank you in advance for what you will do here in this place this day and we just give you and advance praise and we love you and we praise you and we worship you and we honor you and we magnify you and we extol you and we say we love you father god we love you jesus our glorious bridegroom our husband our savior our lord our master and we love you holy spirit who is our teacher who is our god who is our comforter and we thank you and we praise you for the three in one, the Trinity of the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen, and Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we began last week by comparing the rain that falls in the natural to the reign of the Spirit of God that falls in the realm of the Spirit. And if you'll look at your handouts, I didn't have time to prepare a handout last week, but the pastor didn't give me much advance notice that he wanted me to teach. But I prepared a handout and I, I listed for you the scriptures that we covered last week and also the scriptures that we'll be covering this week. We began last week with the scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 8. 11 in verse 14 and it said thus I will give you the rain of your land in his due season the first rain and the latter rain that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil and you remember we learned last week that anytime you see the words former rain first rain early rain any time you see these words in the scripture they all mean the same this passage in deuteronomy that we just read is referring to the land of israel where no rain falls for six months out of the year so with, during the time of the drought the, the earth becomes dry, it becomes parched, it becomes barren. And the first rain, the early rain, the former rain falls in the land of Israel to prepare the ground to receive the seed that is planted in it. And then the latter rain falls just before the harvest to perfect the fruits that the farmers have planted in the ground it's just like if we didn't get rain there would be no fruit on the trees there would be no apples there would be no peaches no pears there would be no corn in the fields there would be no potatoes nothing would grow to maturity if we didn't have rain and so we began last week by comparing the the rain that falls in the natural with the rain of the spirit that will fall in the coming days. 
Now, we learned last week that rain is a type. It's a symbol. It's a picture of the Holy Spirit, just like wind, just like fire, just like water, oil, dove, pledge, a seal. Is the Holy Spirit a dove? No, that is just a type. It's a shadow. It's a symbol to show us a part of his nature, his character, what he's really like. And so rain in the scriptures is a type it's a shadow it's a picture of the holy spirit and we learned that the former rain of the spirit fell on the day of pentecost over two thousand years ago and the latter rain of the spirit will come it will fall just before the last great harvest of souls before the end of time and our lord and savior jesus returns and the latter rain of the Spirit, it will fall to perfect the fruit of the Spirit in us, just like the latter rain falls in the natural to perfect the fruit of the earth and cause it to grow to maturity. Well, the latter rain of the Spirit will fall to perfect the fruit of the Spirit in us, love, joy, peace, all of the fruit that is listed in Galatians chapter 5. And we began last week covering the scriptures in the word of God where the word former rain or our latter rain is mentioned. And we'll just read through those quickly. In Job chapter 29 and verse 23, the word of God says, And they waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 15 says in the light of the king's countenance is life and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain hallelujah in jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 24 we read neither say they in their heart let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth them rain and what type of rain was given both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Oh, and then we concentrated on the passage of scripture in Hosea. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. Then shall we know if there's a condition, isn't it? There to this verse. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us how? As the rain. As the latter and former rain unto the earth. And the key word in this whole verse is that one little word, if. If we follow on to know the Lord, what's going to happen? He shall come unto us as or like the rain. And we talked about last week how we must always be moving forward with the Lord. We can't ever be sitting still spiritually. We've got to make the decision that we're going to be a part of that group within a group that we talked about. The ones that want all God has for them. The ones that want to grow and want to learn and want to mature and become mature sons of God like the scripture talks about. We talked about becoming a part of the ecclesia. You remember? E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A is the Greek word. The ecclesia. Ecclesia, the called out ones, that is those elected, those chosen from among many. I don't know about you, but I likes to be chose, don't you? In school, I never like to be 
picked last when we was out on the playground playing games. I likes to be chose among the first. I don't like to be just chose last and, and somebody pick me because I'm the only one left to pick when they're choosing teams. I like to be chose first, don't you? Well, we have the opportunity to be ch among the chosen ones, the group within a group, the called out ones, like Gideon's 300 that we talked about last week. He started out with thousands and thousands of men and he wound up with only 300 and God won the victory in that battle. Only 300. They were the group within the group. We talked about how all of the men that walked on the earth in, during the time of Jesus' earthly ministry and out of all those men... Jesus chose how many to be his disciples? Twelve. Only twelve. That group within a group. And even among the twelve, there was the inner three of Peter, James, and John. Oh, and then on the day of Pentecost, the scripture tells us that after Jesus was resurrected, he appeared to above 500 people at one time. But yet on the day of Pentecost, there was only 120 that was willing to, to receive all that God had for them. They were willing to pay the price. They were willing to go on and, and be used of the Lord. They were the group within the group. And they received the mighty outpouring of the early reign of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Make the decision that you're going to be a one of that group within the group that's willing to pay the price to walk in the anointing and the power of God and receive all of the benefits of the latter reign of the Holy Spirit being poured out upon your life. And we looked at the glorious passage in Joel chapter 2 and verse 23. And I know that I covered a lot of Hebrew words and I know if you're not used to doing Hebrew and Greek word studies, I know that this was confusing and it was hard to grasp. So I put those words in your handout so that you could see them. And we're going to just touch on them quickly before we move on. Joel 2.23 says, Be glad then ye children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and and the latter rain in the first month. Now you remember we learned that even, that even though the word rain is mentioned four times in this one verse, three of the words for rain have a completely different meaning in the original Hebrew. And we talked about that last week. And I've listed them for you in your handout. The first word for rain that's mentioned is in the phrase, he hath given you the former rain moderately. And that word for rain in the Hebrew, if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it's number 400. 4,175, and that Hebrew word is more, M-O-W-R-E-H, and it means a teacher or teaching. So it does, it's not referring to physical, literal rain at all. And the word moderately, that, this is the only time that the word moderately is used in the entire Bible, either the Old or the New Testament. The Hebrew word for moderately, Moderately is T S E D A Q A H, and it means righteousness or to cause to become righteous. I like that, don't you? And the second time that the word rain is used, it, we find it in the phrase, For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. This Hebrew word for rain is Old Testament number 1653. If you look it up in the Strong's Concordance. And it's Geshem. G-E-S-H-E-M. And it means a shower. 
And the third time the word rain is used, look at the phrase, For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain. This is the same Hebrew word used for rain the first time that the word rain is mentioned. It's more a teacher or teaching. And then the last time, the fourth time that the word rain is used in this verse, for he hath given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and look at it, the latter rain. This Hebrew word for rain is number 4,456 in, in the Strong's Concordance. And it is M-A-L-Q-O-W-S-H, Malkoshe. And it means the latter growth or crop or the latter rain. So using the Hebrew meanings of this scripture, look at it. I've got it in your handout. This is what this verse is saying. It's saying, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you a teacher of righteousness to cause you to become righteous, and he will cause to come down for you a shower. Then teachers and teaching, and then the latter grow, are crop in the first month. Think about this. Think about what this is saying. God first gave a teacher of righteousness. In the beginning, what did God do? He sent his son. The word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. God sent a teacher of righteousness. Why? To cause the people that he taught and caused the apostles to pen the words of the gospel so that you can I can read them to cause us to become righteous. God first sent the greatest teacher who ever lived, Jesus, the teacher of righteousness, to cause the people then and us now when we read the word to become righteous. And he will cause to come down for you a shower, this verse says. That that shower was the former rain of the day of Pentecost that fell 2,000 years ago. And then he's given teachers and teaching. That's where we are today. That's the dispensation that we are living in today. The Holy Spirit, the rain of the Holy Spirit came as the former rain on the day of Pentecost to indwell men and women of God. And God placed a calling and an anointing on, upon some to be teachers, to be ministers, to be preachers of the gospel, to proclaim, thus saith the word, and to instruct those. That's the dispensation we're living in today of the day of teachers and teaching and ministry that will come forth under the anointed word of God. Why? To cause us to grow, to cause us to mature, to cause us to become uh, mature sons of God and, and walk in all that he has for us. And then the last part of this verse tells us what's going to happen next. And then the latter growth or crop in the first month, then the latter rain is going to fall. The, the latter rain of the Holy Spirit of God is going to come. The Ruach HaKodesh is the, the original language, the original wording for the Holy Spirit. Ruach means breath. And any time you see the word spirit when it's referring to the Holy Spirit, if you look it up in Hebrew, it's Ruach. Ruach, the breath of God. God breathed upon us. And when we were born again, he breathed the breath of life, eternal life into us and we'll never die again. The Ruach HaKodesh, the breath of God in the form of the precious Holy Spirit of grace. Oh, the former rain came just as a shower. This verse is telling us, my, if the mighty miracles that were performed after the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts were, was just a shower. My, 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 
Now what will the latter rain of the Spirit of God be like when it's poured out upon this earth? It will be a time when the Spirit of grace is poured out not like a shower, but like a flood upon the earth. Glory to God. And in between the time of the former rain on the day of Pentecost and the latter rain just before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but between the former and latter rain, God has teachers who are teaching and ministers who are preaching the word of God, teaching those group within a group, the ones who are part of the ecclesia, the ones who are going to follow on to know the Lord, to grow and to mature and to walk in the power and the anointing and manifest the glory of God that will come upon the earth during the latter rain, when the latter rain of the Spirit falls. Now that's the review of what we covered last week. So those of you who weren't here, that's got you caught up to where we're going to begin today. In the summer of 1986, 1986, in the church that I was attending at Rainsville, there was 11 people that was meeting on a Tuesday night for intercessory prayer. Those 11 people had prayed and they had had a wonderful time of intercession. And after the, that prayer time was over, one of them looked out the window and they saw rain falling from the clouds, from the sky. And they began to look closely. And that rain, they could see it up in the atmosphere, but the rain was not falling and hitting the cars. The rain wasn't falling and hitting the ground. The ground wasn't getting wet. Their cars wasn't getting wet. And so, so they, the one that saw that told the others, look, look, there's rain falling in the sky, but nothing is hitting the ground. Our cars out there are still dry. So they all went outside to check it out. And as they was looking, they could see the rain coming out up from, down from the heavens. But yet when they held their hands out, no rain was, was hitting them. And two days after that, I was talking to a lady that lived in Albertville. And she said, you know, the strangest thing happened to me Tuesday night. And I didn't say a word about what had happened at the intercessory prayer group at church. And she said, the strangest thing happened to me Tuesday night. She said, I was out on my back porch praying. And as I pr was praying, I opened my eyes and I looked up. And she said, I, it, I could see it raining. It was raining. The rain was falling from the sky. I could see it, but yet none of it was hitting the ground. Nothing was getting wet. And then I told her about what had happened at Rainsville at the church during intercessory prayer. And think about that. The same people saw the rain. The lady in Albertville lived 45 minutes away from the people that, that was at the church at Rainsville. Yet they all saw the same thing. They all saw that rain falling, but yet it wasn't hitting the ground. And then I remembered as I was listening to those stories, I remembered how in, in February or March of that same year in 1986, I, it was during a time of intense praise and worship in the, ch in the church service that morning. And I had my eyes closed and I was just lost in praise and worship and just just loving on the Lord. And as I, I happened to open my eyes and I could see drops of rain. I could see rain falling. It was coming from the ceiling and it was coming just above people's heads. Except it wasn't literal water. It was rays of brilliant light. I could see them coming through the ceiling and coming down just above the people's heads. But it wasn't coming down upon them. It was just hanging there in midair, the rays of brilliant light coming through the ceiling. And I couldn't understand it. I thought, what is going on? What is happening? And so I began to 
search the scriptures. I began to study about rain. And that's what caught, that's what birthed this teaching is out of that experience. And then the, the, what happened at the church at intercessory prayer and the lady in Aberville talking about seeing the rain coming out of the sky, but yet it wasn't falling. It wasn't hitting the ground. And as I began to study and research, I came to this scripture in Hosea 6, 3 that we read then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain as the former and latter rain upon the earth and I kept meditating on that one phrase in this verse he shall come unto us as the rain. And I meditated on it. He shall come unto us as the rain. He shall come unto us as the rain. And the question came to my mind, have you ever seen rain fall in the natural and not touch the ground? No. Have you ever been outside when it was raining and been out there without an umbrella and not get wet? No, if, if you're outside in the rain, you're going to get wet, aren't you, if you don't have an umbrella? Well, this scripture says that the latter rain of the Spirit of God will fall as, or in like manner, or in the same way as the natural rain. Well, if the latter rain of the Spirit is going to fall just as or in like manner or in the same way as the natural rain, then it's going to have to hit the earth, isn't it? It's going to have to cover the earth. It's going to have to hit this earth, our earth. We're, we're made from the, from the earth, aren't we? God formed Adam out of the dust of the earth and he breathed into his nostrils and he became a living soul. Our bodies, when we die, will go back to the the earth the rain of the spirit if it's going to fall in the same manner or like the 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 latter rain upon the earth falls to perfect the fruit of the earth for the harvest if the latter rain of the spirit is going to fall in the like manner in the same way as literal rain then it's going to have to fall and cover the whole earth it's going to have to fall and cover this earth our flesh our bodies and as I kept studying and I, as I kept researching, I came to this verse. I came to this passage in Zechariah. And I want you to turn to the book of Zechariah. It's easy to find. It's right there next to Malachi. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. And Zechariah is right next to the book of Malachi. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 1. At this whole study of at, coming out out of the experiences that we had back in 1986 is what caused me to, to study and to research. And the first time I taught on the glorious subject of the former and the latter rain was in January of 1987. That was 21 years ago. I've been teaching the Word of God for 24 and a half years, and I've decided I don't know anything. The more I study and the more I teach, the less I realize that I know. But I began to, to study and I prepared and I taught on the former and latter rain 21 years ago. And now God is stirring my spirit once again to study on this glorious subject again now and to teach on it. Why? Because I believe God's getting ready to do something. Why? I believe he's getting ready to start that outpouring of the Spirit. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. 
There was a something else that happened in, back in 1986, that same year that all of us saw the, the rain of the Spirit falling. I was listening to a tape by Kenneth Hagin. Have you ever heard of Kenneth Hagin? I'm sure everybody has heard of Kenneth Hagin. I was listening to a tape by Brother Hagin, and in this tape, he made this statement. Brother Kenneth Hagin said, I sense in my spirit that the heavens seem to be so full of the Spirit of God that if you could just reach your arm up into the heavens and pull a lever, the Spirit would pour down upon the earth. Well, how are we going to reach up in the heavens? How are we going to pull that lever that will open the floodgates so the Spirit of God can pour down upon the earth? How are we going to do it? What will trigger the release of, of the outpouring of the latter rain of the Spirit of God? What will trigger and what will cause God to say, now I'm going to send the latter rain of the Spirit. Well, this verse gives us the key. Let's read it one more time. Zechariah 10.1 Ask ye of the Lord rain when in the time of the latter rain so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Now put in your handout the Hebrew meanings of some of the key words in this, in this verse. Look at your handout. The word ask in Hebrew. Ask. That very first word in verse 1. Ask. This he word in Hebrew is Sha'el. S-H-A-W-A-L. There's two Hebrew spellings of it. It is also spelled S-H-A-E-L. And it means to request or to demand. And the Hebrew word for bright clouds. Bright clouds is C-H-A-Z-I-Y-Z. -Z. And it means to glare. It means a flash of lightnings. And the phrase showers of rain. If you look that phrase up in Hebrew, it means violent rain rains, violent rains. So this verse is saying, if you put the Hebrew meanings of the words in this verse, this verse is saying, ask or request or demand rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make flashes of lightning and give them violent rains. The magnitude of the reign of the Spirit upon the earth in the last days will be like violent rains falling, this verse is telling us. Remember the former rain that fell on the day of Pentecost was just a what? A shower. And we learned how it fell over 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost. Think about it. We talked about it last week. All of the glorious that miracles that happened in the book of Acts after the day of Pentecost. This, All those miracles was just a shower. We talked about how Peter preached on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people were saved. He preached again and 2,000 were saved. Peter and John was walking into the temple and they saw the lame man sitting by the gate of the temple asking alms. And Peter said, look on us. And he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And that lame man, it, the scriptures says immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength and he leaping up he stood and walked and he went with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God that was it during the former rain just a little shower of the Holy Spirit and we talked about last week how the apostles were put in prison and how God sent his angel and released them from prison and how Peter 
and Philip, all oh, they were preaching all through the, the, the area. Philip preached, you remember in the scripture records that after he preached, he was translated. He was here one minute and, and another place the next. That was just a shower. And I believe in the end time, the latter reign of the Holy Spirit of God, people are going to be translated from one place to another. As the Spirit of God needs you in Africa or in Zimbabwe, immediately you'll be standing here and on the shores of America and then instantly you're going to be in another country looking around. How did I get here? If God did it in the Old Testament with the prophet Elijah, he'd just transport him from one mountain to the other. You remember when the king came he sent a servant to bring a, the prophet Elijah and the, the, the servant said, Hey, Elijah, I... The king's going to kill me because when I go back and tell him I found you, then when he comes, God's going to, he's going to have transported you to some other place. Elijah said, don't worry, I'll be here when the king comes back. Elijah was so accustomed to God transporting him, translating him from one place to another. That's going to happen again. That's going to happen again in the latter reign. If it happened after the former reign, Philip was translated from one place to another. Why? Because God needed him back over in another place. So he just picked him up. What if the price of, ga of gasoline goes to $10 a gallon or whatever? Wherever God needs you to minister, he'll just transports you there. You won't need a car. You won't need an airplane. Think about it. We don't have to fear what's coming in the economy. We, if we're following on to know the Lord, the latter reign of the Spirit of God, we won't lack anything. God will provide for us. You remember we talked about the former reign and when Dorcas died and when Peter, he walked in and he laid hands on her and she was raised from the dead. We talked about how Paul raised that man from the dead from the dead who fell out of the third loft and we talked about how he was stoned and left for dead at Lystra and that it, the uh the apostles gathered around him and prayed and God raised him back up. There's people going to be raised from the dead during the latter reign of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Cause the former rain came just as a shower, but the latter rain is going to come upon the earth as a violent rain, as the floods are going to fall upon the earth. Glory to God. It'll be a flood, not of natural rain, but of the rain of the Spirit of God. Now I want you to turn to the book of James. Uh, over in the New Testament, you thought I was just going to stay in the Old Testament, didn't you? You thought that, that all of the scriptures just pertain to the book of, uh, to the Old Testament. No, there is, uh, there's passages in the New Testament telling us about the former and the latter reign of the Spirit of God also. I want you to turn to the book of James chapter 5. James chapter 5. The word of God says, Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive what? The early and latter rain. Who is the husbandman that is, is referred to in this birth? Who is the husbandman? It's Jesus. Jesus is the husbandman. You remember Jesus gave the parable in Matthew chapter 13. The parable of the man who sowed the good seed in, his, in the ground. But then the, an enemy came and he sowed tares among those good seed. Jesus, in explaining the meaning of the parable, said that the field was the earth. The world. And God said that the children of the kingdom was the good seed. And the tares are the children of the wicked one. The children of the enemy. Those who are not born again. And Jesus in explaining this parable. He said that the harvest is the end of the world. Think about it. 
What are we studying about? The, the former and the latter reign of the Spirit. And the latter reign will, call, will come. It will fall at the end of time. At the end of this age. The harvest, Jesus said in explaining that parable in Matthew 13. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers, he said, are the angels. And, it, and Jesus said that the tares are going to be gathered. And they're going to be burned in, in the fire. And then he said said that the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Jesus explained what's going to happen at the end of time. And when the time of the latter rain has fallen upon the earth, and how the fruit of the earth is been, has been perfected, and the fruit of the earth has grown to maturity. But remember... That Jesus right now, he is waiting for us to grow up. He's waiting for us to grow and to mature. To get ready for that outpouring of the latter rain of the Spirit. To be spiritually mature enough to walk in the anointing like the apostles in the book of Acts. To where God can use us to perform mighty miracles of God like happened in the book of Acts. Jesus, our husbandman, is waiting for the precious fruit fruit of the earth. This verse in James 5, 7 tells us he's waiting. The husbandman Jesus is waiting for the precious fruit of the earth to ripen. He's waiting for his people. The group within a group. Those who are, want all that God has for them. Those who are willing to go on and, and, and walk in the fullness of the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. He's waiting for us to grow up and leave behind the beggarly elements of this life and to grow up and be mature sons of God. And grow up like Ephesians 4 tells us. Into the stature of the fullness of Christ. I want to be one of that group within a group. Don't you? Jesus is waiting. And this verse says he has long patience. He's waiting with long patience for that time to come. When his body, his bride is going to grow up. And uh, to be changed into his likeness and into his image. Through the teaching and teaching uh, of the, the anointed ministers of this day causing the body of Christ to grow into maturity and remember he has to wait this verse tells us in James 5 7 the husbandman Jesus has to wait until when the early and latter rain well the early rain is already come it came 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost and the latter rain is coming the latter rain is what will ripen the fruit of the earth what will ripen us what will cause the fruit of the spirit in us what will cause us to grow into and to mature in him the latter rain is what's going to ripen the fruit of the harvest of souls upon this earth Get Getting them ready for the return of Jesus, our husbandman. And then Jesus will cast forth his sickle into the harvest. In, the, in that parable that Jesus explained to the disciples that we talked about. The, he said that the reapers were the angels. And they, when they harvested their grain and their crops in Bible days, they didn't have combines. They didn't have all of the modern equipment and tractors like we have today. They had hand tools and they had sickles. And Jesus said, said that that they that the sickle would be cast forth into the earth to reap the harvest. Do you know what the sickle is going to be in this in the last days when the latter rain of the Spirit of God has fallen and the fruit of the earth, the, the body of Christ has grown to maturity? The sickle of, that it will be used is the glory of God that has fallen during the end time. The latter rain of the Spirit of God. Saints, we got to get ready, don't we? We We've got to get ready. Now I want you to look. Look down in James chapter 5 at verse 17 and 18. James chapter 5, 17 and 18. Elias, talking about the prophet Elijah. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. 
Now look at verse 18. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Now, I know the scripture tells us clearly when Elijah prayed first, he prayed that it wouldn't rain and that caused a three and a half year drought. No rain fell for three and a half years. But this scripture here in James 5 verse 18 says that Elijah prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And I meditated on that and I thought about it. And I said, now I know he prayed the first time. And the rain was withheld for three and a half years. But I don't remember reading in the scripture where Elijah prayed again for rain. I want you to turn over to 1 Kings chapter 18. And I want us to read this account. 1 Kings chapter 18. If Elijah prayed again for rain, I wanted to find out when he prayed. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse, beginning in verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, the king is who Elijah was talking about. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. And I can hear the sound in the realm of the spirit, can't you? I can hear the sound. God's getting ready to send not just a shower like he sent on the day of Pentecost, but uh, the abundance of rain. I can hear the sound in the realm of the spirit, just like Elijah did. Elijah said to King Ahab, get up, eat, drink, prepare yourself. Get ready, king, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Verse 42. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now. Look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he, talking about Elijah, said to his servant, go again. How many? Seven times. The number seven in Bible numerology means completion or perfection or bringing to an end. If you want to study a glorious subject in the word of God, study the significance of Bible numerology. Oh, it's awesome. So Elijah told his servant, go look seven times. Verse 44. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. Now had the rain come? No, he saw just a tiny little cloud in the sky. But Elijah was speaking by faith. He said, get up. You better get going, King Ahab. Because if you don't, the rain's going to pour down. And the, the road, the passage is going to become so muddy that your chariot wheels are going to get stuck in the mud. And you're not going to be able to get home. So you better get going, King. Verse 45. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was a little shower there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel now I looked at through that passage and I read verse 42 again over and over and over I want, you, I want to read it to you again Verse 42, so Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And now I read that over and over and over again, and I thought, this doesn't say that Elijah prayed. It said that he just went up, sat down on the earth, put his, he kneeled down on his knees, and put his face down in between his knees. 
This doesn't say a word about Elijah praying. And I'm thinking, Lord, did James just get mixed up when he said that Elijah prayed again? And the heavens gave the rain? I began to research and I began to study and I began to learn what it meant when it said that Elijah cast himself down upon the earth and he put his face between his knees. Do you know what Elijah did? This is the eastern birthing position. The eastern birthing position. When a woman that was with child was ready to deliver that child, they had birthing stools in Bible days. And that woman would enter into the eastern birthing position. She would kneel down. She would get down and she would sit upon that birthing stool. And when she was delivered of that child through the, the travail of the contractions, that child would be born. Well, the prophet Elijah, entered into the eastern birthing position. A faith man entered into the birthing position and he interceded and he travailed and with seven great contractions of travail and intercession the rain came hallelujah all of the miracles that the prophet Elijah had performed before all of the mighty works that God had performed by the prophet Elijah's hands they did not bring the rain Elijah Raising that boy from the dead didn't bring the latter rain. They didn't bring the rain that broke the drought. Elijah calling fire down from heaven did not bring the rain. What brought the rain? Elijah, the faith man, entered into the eastern birthing position. He groaned. He travailed. He interceded. Intercession is what brought the rain to for Elijah. And beloved intercession is what is going to bring the latter rain of the Spirit of God upon the earth. The latter rain's not going to fall until men and women of faith enter into the birthing position and get out on their face and begin to pray, begin to intercede, begin to travail in the Spirit and pray and cry out to God for the rain and God will pour out. He'll open up the flood gates and he'll pour out the rain of the spirit of God the latter rain upon the earth Romans 8 22 says for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now the earth is going is is having birthing pains is going through travail the earth is came under a curse when Adam fell the whole creation is groaning and travailing to be set free from the curse that came upon it when Adam fell what is going to set creation free men and women of God who like Elijah will enter into that eastern birthing position of, of travail and groan and travail and intercede until God opens the windows of heaven and sends the latter rain of his spirit in Zechariah 10 1 what did we read that Zechariah 10 1 says ask ye of the Lord rain when in the time of the latter rain and he will send forth just a shower no, he will send forth violent rains, floods of his spirit. Hallelujah. But the latter rain of the Spirit of God is only going to come through intercession. In 1986, 21 years ago, we saw the rain of the Spirit of God in the atmosphere. We saw the rain coming. We saw the rain falling, but and God wants us today to ask 
of the Lord reign to intercede to pray in order to get the reign of the spirit of God from the atmosphere down upon the earth down to where it will fall upon us and fall upon the whole creation and set creation free hallelujah prayer and intercession did you realize that that's what brought the former reign on the day of Pentecost did you realize that? I didn't until I studied this out about the former and latter reign of the Spirit. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 14, it says, These all continued with one accord and prayer and supplication. It's talking about the 120 souls that were in the upper room that day. These all continued with one accord in prayer and and supplication or making petitions. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. These 120. And by the way, people who don't believe that women should speak in church people who believe that women are to keep silent in church who was in the upper room on the day of Pentecost it says that the, talking about the apostles they continued in one accord in prayer and supplication with the women with Mary the mother of Jesus with his brethren on the day of Pentecost they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they all spoke in other tongues the day of Pentecost was one glory glorious day when the women didn't keep silent in church amen so if they could speak then we can still speak now yeah. if God can use Balaam's donkey to speak he can sure use a woman can he hallelujah what brought the former reign on the day of Pentecost prayer intercession prayer and supplication them interceding making their requests made known unto God and God opened the windows of heaven and he poured out his Holy Spirit upon the earth and it was just a shower to God. People ask me, why do you dance in the Holy Ghost so much? I can't help it. It gets in my feet and I just can't be still. My mama, I've seen her dance all over the church dancing in the Holy Ghost. You don't have to have music to do the, the Holy Ghost two-step. Anytime the anointing of the Spirit of God comes on you, you can dance in the Holy Ghost giving Him praise, giving Him glory. Hallelujah! The former rain of the Spirit of God fell on the day of Pentecost just as a little shower and 22 years ago in 1986 we saw the rain trying to fall trying to come in 1986 we saw the rain in the heavens we saw it coming down but yet it didn't get all the way down and now 22 years later in 2008 God is stirring us once again to begin to pray and he's sending out the call through teachers and teaching and ministers who are teaching and preaching about prayer and that God is sending out the call once again here in 2008 22 years later to intercede to pray so that he can open the floodgates and out, pour out His Spirit and as the latter rain of the Spirit, not as a shower, but as a flood. Hallelujah! Prayer is what brought the former rain of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And prayer and intercession is what will cause the latter rain of the Spirit to fall. Men and women full of faith like Elijah. Who will enter in to the eastern birthing position and intercede, groan, and travail until God sends the latter rain of His precious Holy Spirit upon the earth. And everybody said, Amen! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Me and my wife just talking yesterday, and how many remember me making a statement uh, about something great is about to happen. Something great is about to take place. Now we're getting teaching through prayer. And what she's teaching on now is that what God has given us full knowledge of what we are about to walk under and to walk in and to walk through. So uh, begin to intercede and pray. Pray like you've never prayed before. Get before God and see what God is going to do. Because me and my wife's talking about it, and she said it's, and, and I don't mean to say this as dangling a carrot, like I've had them dangling in front of me to make me think that I might get something good. But it's like something there is dangling, just, just waiting for you to receive it. But we've got knowledge this morning on how we can receive it. Amen. And God is just looking some for somebody that's a group within a group. See, and, and those that you think that God wouldn't do it for, he'll get them first. And cause them just to be an example to you, to cause you to get hungry and thirsty 